Hey. My next guest is the CEO of a company called Matrix Composite and Engineering. This is a company that many of you would have heard Roger Montgomery often talking about, and it remains inside Roger's preferred list of companies. Our CEO of the company is Aaron Begley, and he joins me in Perth right now. Aaron, thanks for joining us on Switzer. Thanks very much. So tell us about two things, mm -hmm. the name of the company, and give us the history of the company as well. Sure. Well, we'll look at uh, Matrix. Uh, the origin of the name is very simple. I was, it was about 1999, and we just decided to uh, to. to to split uh, our our company uh, up into our engineering division, our composite materials division. Mm -hmm. We were called Matrix Asia Pacific, mm -hmm. and composites and engineering really just described we, we felt what we what we did. Okay, well, but most normal people out there don't know what a composite is. Tell sure. us what a composite is. Well, well, a composite in uh, in layman's terms is just like fiberglass. Uh, oh. So it's like a comp composition of, of resin and and a reinforcement. Mm. And in our case, uh, we use uh, we use glass spheres and also composite spheres made from carbon fibre or or from fiberglass to uh, to create new materials. So okay. in, in in a way, we're a we're a materials engineering company as much as we are an engineered products company. Uh, so what kinds of products does your product eventually end up in that we might know? Right. Well, look, our products are, are used uh, primarily for manufacturing deep water flotation devices. Mm. So we design and manufacture subsea buoyancy systems for deep water drilling platforms mm. and, and deep water drilling rigs. So who are your customers? Are they oil rigs? Well, yeah, uh, primarily the operators of, uh, of, uh, of, oil, of oil oil drilling rigs, so yeah. drilling contractors. Did you have any heart flutters when the, the, the BP problem happened in the Gulf of oh, Mexico? Look, I think the entire industry had heart flutters. It, mm. was, it, was, a, it was a tragic event, it really was, yeah. and, it, and it's had uh, very widespread uh, ramifications. It, it really has has changed the way drilling contra uh, you know, drilling is going to be done in deep water. Mm. And I think there has there has been a positive that's come out of that, which has been increased regulation, and also a, a drive to improve drilling practices, update equipment, uh, and make things safer. And, and that has has had a positive impact on our business. Is that, so it's been good for your. It's business? been good for our business. Yes. Okay. How many rivals do you have out there in the world? Look, re really, we have about two or three. Mm. Uh, we don't have any in this part of the world. Mm. Our, um, our nearest rival is probably in Europe, mm. and we have a couple in, uh, in North America. One of the reasons we've been successful is because we have been able to differentiate on quality. We, we are considered to, well, I believe we're considered to be the best uh, as, as far as uh, quality is concerned and technical performance mm. in the industry, and that's, and that's worked very well. What about, and this is a question that appears mm. you know, has come to me listening to you then, has the, the exchange rate been a bit of a challenge to you? Well, not really. We we have we, we import a lot of our raw materials. Okay, so there's a benefit there. So there's a benefit there. So we're selling in US dollars typically, mm. and and we also purchase our raw materials in US dollars. Mm. So there's a natural hedge associated mm. with that. Mm. And what we do do is we have a, a hedging policy, which uh, hedges most of or almost all of our Australian dollar uh, risk. So mm. that includes gross profit and Australian dollar inputs such as labour and, and tooling. So costs. effectively, becomes a cost of production. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Uh, why do you think Roger, why do you think he's supported your company so strongly? Well, I think one of the reasons is there's a combination of the, you know, the, the fact that we're a solid industrial stock, you know, we do produce a good profit, uh, we've got a good track record, uh, we pay dividends, and I think there's a combination of that plus we, we, we're in a very exciting space. You know, we're, in, we're exposed to the deep water sector, uh, the broader energy sector as well. Uh, we're located in Western Australia where lots of things are happening in the LNG industry, for example. And so you will get benefit out of the LNG expansion? Look, we will. At the moment, most of our revenue is derived from exports. Yeah. Um, we About 90% of our revenue is actually derived from, from exports, and we export to the United States, mm. uh, up into North Asia and Southeast Asia. Uh, but certainly, uh, going forward over the, next, uh, over the next two to three years, we expect to see a lot of a lot of re revenue generated from domestic sales mm. uh, to uh, you know, really where, where we're looking at Australian content, mm. and the reason we think that'll happen is because we are globally competitive in our field anyway. Yeah. So if it's required in our own backyard, it's likely that you know, we have a good chance that we'll get the, uh, we'll the get share the price has been heading in the right direction, hasn't it? Well, it has. We, we listed in uh, November two thousand and nine hundred dollar, mm. and we closed oh, today at nine dollars and eleven cents. Yeah. so it's it's not bad. Now, the, but Roger's comparisons are always based on the intrinsic value of a company. Company compared sure. to the, the share price, and mm -hmm. consistently, oh, your company has had an intrinsic value that was higher than the, the mm -hmm. market share price, and hence the reason why he continually uh, gives it the tick. Sure. What have you been doing to improve your intrinsic value? Obviously, we're 
we're uh, we're meeting profit expectations. Yeah. I think that's the first. Uh, you know, in the first half, we uh, we made a, a, a an impact of over 19 million dollars, mm. which was actually more than our full year profit for the previous financial year. So your half year was 19. Yes. And and the year before you made uh, about less... 18. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what happened between those two? That just just to answer my question. Right. Well, look, we, we've seen a, a, a ramp up uh, in production out of our out of our current production facilities here yeah. in Perth. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so so that's continued to perform well. Mm. But I think also we are operating in a, again in a very interesting space. We have our own IP. Mm. So uh, we're not a build to print company like a lot of en engineering companies uh, can be. Yep. Uh, so we are developing materials, uh, designing uh, designing products, testing products, commercialising them and selling. What happens to your business when the oil price does what it's doing now? Does it put question marks over it or does it actually make it easier for oil companies to pay for your service? Well, I think probably the latter. I mean, there um, there there is a little bit of pressure on input costs, but it's, it's not that significant. Mm. Uh, a, a lot of our raw materials that we use, uh, the base chemicals and so forth, aren't necessarily tied to the oil price. So <laughs> really, the, I wouldn't say the higher the oil price, the better, but certainly around this level is very attractive. Yes. For it. So yeah. it increases demand for, yeah. for, for, for drill rigs, number one, uh, but also brings marginal fields on. And e even when that happens, that, that also in increases our market base. Okay. I always say to Roger, it's all very well to work yeah. out your intrinsic yeah. value of a company, but what other things that could go wrong that could undermine the intrinsic value of a company? Sure. So, so I guess you must do it as a risk manager. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So what are those things? Then we can work out whether it's a high order or a low order risk. Sure, sure. Well, look, um, we... Yeah. The board of Matrix is very much a strategic board. That's 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 the way where we do it. So yeah. so we analyse risks yeah. uh, all, all, all the time, and I think um, you know, there are several uh, risks that we identify, and, we, and we're quite transparent about this as yeah. well. Uh, we need to get a Hend our new plant in Henderson, uh, which is a sixty-four million dollar investment, mm. uh, up and running. Now this this plant is uh, highly automated, mm. very sophisticated, and, and with anything that has a high degree of complexity, mm. comes you question know, marks. Yeah, well, question marks and some and some yeah. risks associated with and that. And teething problems. Yeah, all those sorts yeah. of things. Now, we think we've mitigated all those risks. We have a very good team running it. Uh, but, but nevertheless, it is it is a risk. Uh, so, so that's I, I guess that's uh, that's one area. But we are starting to uh, sequentially put on, turn on production uh, at our Henderson plant. So, and we have our backup plant, which is uh, which is the, our existing plant in Malaga. Okay. So the idea is then, I presume, that if this plant comes online, mm -hmm. you have more capacity. To Correct. It. So at the moment, you have sort of capacity issues that yes. critical mass is hit. You're just not able to meet all. That's, that's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're able to satisfy our customer uh, demands, but. Yeah. In many, in many cases, we can't take on new orders yeah, because of chase. those. Yeah, that, that's right, because of those restrictions, not the short-term ones anyway. Mm. Uh, so Henderson will give us more capacity, but will also lower our operating costs as well yeah. because uh, we'll see a reduction in, you know, in, in rental and logistics and so on and so forth, lower labour costs and so on. How, I guess you would have made at some stage a calculation of how important China and India's demand mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. to ultimately the oil price and ultimately your business. Yes. And if you have, what are what are you, what is your view on say for example China going for? Oh well, look, I think there is a uh, all, all the all the forecasts show that that uh, due to a, a rising middle class in China and in India and the ongoing industrialisation of those economies that that, that, that their energy demand is only going one way, which is up. Yeah. And uh, although there is a push for green energy and nuclear power and all those sorts of things, you know, the the demand for fossil fuels uh, I think is only going to go one way. And it's not just oil, but it's also LNG. Do you worry about things like carbon tax? That, that, that might become a, an issue for your company. Are you big enough to be affected by that? Uh, well, look, uh, we don't believe so at this stage. Um, we. Uh, we are a gas consumer, we are an electricity consumer, but I don't think it's that significant. Mm. Uh, I think, uh, again, because we're, we're, we're exporting to, uh, well, primarily an exporter, mm. I don't think it's going to have, have much of an effect on So us. your greatest threat would, would be oh. GFC Mark II. Correct. More yep. serious than the one we went yes. through, because you, you did OK during that. Well, look, we did very well. Um, actually, we, we, we grew like we'd never grown before through yeah. the GFC, mm. and that was because we had a lot, a lot of long-term projects that had already been committed. Yeah. And so we travelled through the GFC, and we've come out the other side of it and seen an increase in the demand for, uh, for, uh, for new build uh, drill rigs. Yep. And also, we're seeing 
an increase in the demand for subsea uh, production. Mm. Uh, so uh, there is a number. There are a number of projects that were uh, delayed as a result of the GFC, and they've been moved to the right. And this has created sort of a compression of, uh, of project deliveries between sort of late 2011 and 2015 all around the world. Aaron, thanks for joining us on the program. I think I can see why Roger gives you the tick of approval. Oh, thanks very much. Cheers, I enjoyed man. it. Thank you. Okay.